G'day Blade Legends. On tonight's vlog, I want to prove to you that this Prime Fujifilm lens is a must have in your arsenal for any photographer and videographer out there. Let's get right into it and roll that intro. G'day you good people, thank you for joining me for another Nightscape vlog talking why this lens is a must have in your arsenal for any Fujifilm shooter, for landscape night, travel photography, or low light shooting, whatever it is, I believe this must be in your kit. It's gonna be an absolute bell of a vlog, and you're probably wondering how I know that, because I've already shot it. This delivered the goods, so make sure to drop below and subscribe because we're at the same location that I was teaching you last week about shooting wide angle photography. It's gonna be a good one, let's get into it. old rust bucket. This is where we were on last week's vlog where I was teaching you all about wide angle photography and getting a foreground element. But today I'm here to talk about the must have Fuji lens in your camera bag, but that's only going to do 50% of the image. I've already went through and done a sneaky sky image just at the side of the car and let me tell you there's some sugar and spice in the sky tonight which is going to make this image pop to life. But it's only going to be as good as the lighting for this old rust bucket. I'm going to talk a lot about lighting and how to catch that in camera to take it back into post-production because we need to nail this because it's no good for a poor foreground for that beautiful blue sugar and spice in the sky. This is going to be cracker. Let's get into setting up this must-have Fuji lens. So there we have it, the composition is now set up with the Fujifilm X-T3 and for me the most versatile prime lens that you need in your arsenal for landscape travel, night photography, low light filming, the 16mm 1.4. The 23mm 1.4 does come very close, that's why I want you guys to let me know in the comments below what would you choose if you had to, if you are forced to have one lens for your versatile setup for a prime lens for Fujifilm. For me, 16mm 1.4, I love that 24mm in full frame equivalent. Right now, I want to go and photograph the composition, obviously, but we're going to break it down into two separate parts. The foreground, the rust bucket, lighting it up, I want to take you through that quite heavily. That is going to have to wait for a couple of minutes because right now, it is 21.49, and in about six or seven minutes time, we're going to be photographing a small Magellanic cloud. Yes, that's right, we are not photographing the Milky Way tonight. How do I know that I'm photographing a small Magellanic cloud? And what is it? That's fine. We're going to go into an app. I'll leave a link for that app in the description below. It's going to tell us what is in the night sky for the current location we're at and the current time we're at. So if I look south, which I'm facing right now, in that I'm going to come up with an SMC. And that is going to come up with a small Magellanic cloud. I can click on that and I can read all information about that. It's a bloody fantastic app, especially if you're like me. Love photographing the night sky, but I don't know a lot about it. I want to learn more about it. So when I photograph this topic we're talking about right now, I can tell you a little bit more about it. So you can go on this app, read all about it, and learn the night sky and what is in that galaxy out there. So for that, I want to go through and get my settings in place. The 16mm 1.4, I said it's a fantastic lens and I absolutely bloody love it. There's one downfall for the night sky. Shooting that 1.4, it suffers from really bad comma. 
So what we're going to do with that is bump it up to F2. This is the best sort of medium ratio to get um, the most light in and reduce the most amount of comma. So it's a happy medium that we that we found out for this lens is absolutely perfect. With that, I want to go through and shoot at 6,400 for my ISO. So now we're at F2, 6,400 ISO. And now we're going to go back to that fantastic app that I always talk about, Photo Pills. I'll leave that in the description below also. What this is going to tell us in Photo Pills, we can scroll down and go to Spot Stars. I put in 16 mil, Fujifilm X-T3, F1.4, which we can change to F2. This is now going to give us 10.85 for an MPF rule, which is perfect if you want to print, and the old school 500 rule. I like to go in the happy medium around 15, but I shoot this at 13 seconds because it's a fan bloody tastic lens. So now, F2, 6400 ISO, focusing to infinity, because that's where the galaxy is, and we're going to go through and shoot at 13 seconds. I'm gonna rattle off 12 images, put it in the intervalometer in camera, and turn that light off and nail this small, Major than cloud, it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. A blue cloud, it's gonna look like a butterfly and light up this image. Let's get into it. Right, 12 images in camera. That looks absolutely ripper. When it looks that good in camera, I just know how well that it's gonna come up in post-production. But now it comes down to the crunch. Mastering this foreground element because I really need that to complement how beautiful this night sky is, that small Magellanic cloud. So now, I wanna put a lot of time and effort into lighting up this foreground. So I go home with about 15, 20 images of that car lit up to use about three or four of them. But I wanna go through and change my settings because I don't wanna use the settings that I was using for the night sky. It's gonna overexpose that artificial light. So what I'm gonna do is bump it up to F4. So basically I'm gonna sort of double or half everything. So I'm gonna to go to F4, my ISO I'm gonna drop down to 1600, and my shutter speed, we're gonna play around with this. What I'm gonna do is do test images at one second, two and a half seconds, and maybe three to four seconds. And I'm gonna have a look in the back of the camera what looks the best, how overexposed and underexposed it is. And then when I'm happy with one of them, we're gonna go ahead and shoot 15, 20, 25 images at those settings. So just to re re reiterate, F4, 1600, and between one to five seconds. What I can do now is drop it back into automatic focus, go down onto the car with the artificial light, and just push focus. So we know at F4 that it's gonna be tack sharp all the way through. Rightio, this is where it comes down to the crunch using the artificial light. This is a Neuer light, battery powered, costs about 50 Australian dollars. They are fantastic. I'm filming one right now, I use it all the time, every time basically go out and shoot a night sky photography vlog. Now it's very important to understand out how to use these. Not push a button and turn it on, but how to light up the foreground. I set up with a two and a half second shutter speed. But now I want to go through and dim this down to 15 because we don't want to basically put it to 50, blow it up, get all that overexposed highlights, and we get into post-production, we haven't got it in. So what I want to do is put it inside and work on really small aspects. So basically what I'm going to do now is only get about five images just for this basically back one third. But when I put the camera, uh, when I put the, sorry, uh, light down, I don't want to just put it and stick it up. Because what I'm going to do is basically make this really overexposed, that dark, that dark. So I'm going to get one image like that. I'm going to get one image where it's facing and lighting that scene up. There's two images. Another one lighting back up this way. And then I'm going to get one lighting back up that way. And maybe just work around and get all those images just for this section. Then I'm going to check them and make sure they're okay. Then we're gonna come back in, and we might just do this one here. Do this one here, do this one here. 15 images just like that, because if I just put that there, and took the image, and got it home and tried to put it into post-reduction, you'll see these pillar might be really overexposed, or a foreground over here might be just one deep shadow and one bright highlight. But getting those five images, we can softly blend that highlight out, softly blend this one out, 
this one out so it's an even field. So it looks like someone's been in here sort of painting all the light perfectly, but we haven't. We've just got 15 images or so and blending them together. So there's a hot tip. Don't overexpose this, but of underexposing it and boosting the camera up just a little bit and get five images concentrate on just the back bit, just the middle bit, just the front bit. If you want to, you can go through and do some stuff outside, maybe put a headlight on it. This is so old, it hasn't got any headlights, but put some headlights on them. But just concentrate on one aspect for one photo. That is the hot tip. Overshoot, don't bloody undershoot. Then we can get them, blend them together, and make this resulting image right now. It should be absolutely ripper. I think tonight's vlog has just proven to any Fujifilm user out there that you need this in your kit. Low light photography, low light filming, photography, travel, whatever it is, this comes in my bag. It is an absolute beast of a lens. But do you agree or do you disagree? Because I'm thinking about buying either 23 or 33 mil 1.4 to expand my night sky photography focal range but it needs to be versatile for that videography style, photography style. I need it to be like a supermarket where you get your bakery, your bananas, and everything in between. It needs to be good for everything, which is the 16mm 1.4. But if you disagree, make sure to let me know in the comments below what you think. Also, if you like tonight's image. Also, while you're down there is an online photography membership course, Netflix for photographers, where you can learn all about night sky photography, landscape photography, weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials, and you'll even get a monthly giveaway, which right now I am giving away a complete filter setup for one lucky subscriber. So if you want to learn night sky photography or photography for that fact, make sure to click that link below. Or if you want to support this channel, you can pay only $4.99 to support this journey that I'm on. I really bloody appreciate it if that is. But guys, make sure to get out there and use whatever lens you've already got, because that's probably the best lens that you own, the one that you've already got not the one that you're thinking about buying. And get out there, create, inspire, and make some bloody epic images. If you do, tag me on a social media, at Matthew Story Photography. I'm always down to see your guys' work. But get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao!